From Phoenix, Arizona, The Cube at Catalyst Conference. Here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with The Cube. We are on the ground at Phoenix, Arizona at the Girls in Tech Catalyst Conference, the fourth year of the conference. There's a lot of Catalyst Conference, but there's only one Girls in Tech Conference. We're excited to be here. Phoenix seems to have some magical formula for women in tech. We were here two years ago at our first Grace Hopper Conference, and so we, uh, we're kind of following up on the wow. tradition, our first time uh, down here at the Catalyst. So we're really excited to have Many time Cube alum, really great woman in tech. Uh, Sandy Carter from IBM, get your title right, the GM Developer Ecosystem Startups yep. at IBM. That's right, so pleased to be here, it's great to be here. Yeah, absolutely, but mainly you're the evangelist that's at all the IBM shows, running all the social. <laughs> you see, if you're on social at all, you know, you know Sandy yeah, Carter. Yeah, make sure you follow me, Sandy underscore Carter. I right. love to have lots of Twitter followers. Absolutely, so what do you think of the Catalyst show? Is this your first one? No, I came last year. Oh, you did, and okay. And I'm actually on the board of Girls in Tech with Adriana, who's oh, awesome. the CEO. I think it's an amazing organization because of all the great opportunities they present to girls and women. Uh, teaching them really being focused on technology. There's lots of great groups out there, but they've kind of lost their way with the tech piece. And so I really love this one because it's a great balance of leadership, but that tech piece is always there. Right. That's interesting because there's, because I guess in our interviews, we've been hearing a lot more kind of about the leadership and about, you know, speaking up for yourself and not accepting less than, than you deserve and really not as much as the tech. So it's good to hear there's still a lot of the tech element in, in the show. Yeah. In fact, um, we just announced with Girls in Tech as part of the board, a partnership with Angel Hack, where we're going to be doing Angel Hacks with the Girls in Tech group and all of the cities in which Girls in Tech is there. So again, another big thrust for the tech piece. Obviously, you have to have leadership to do a great application or a great startup, right. but really emphasizing that tech piece as well. Which is huge. Adriana said, huge. I think they're in like 68 cities or 39 yeah. countries. We're going to have her on a little bit to get kind of the, yeah. the numbers, but what a great, great opportunity. Yeah. So you're presenting here, and yours, your uh, topic was five things every woman needs to know about cognitive. Yeah, I want to, you know, I'm so excited, Jeff, about the cognitive error and what's happening with the changes that are occurring in applications and the way that we are going to do business. And that's all being driven by the technology. So I wanted to make sure that all these amazing women at this conference knew what cognitive was, why it was so important. And then I did a series of five demos to showcase it and to show how easy it is so that everybody could get involved and engaged. Right. Well, I think you touched some nerves because I was just at lunch before we came on and somebody said they felt like just getting up and running out of the room and going <laughs> and learning about AI and artificial intelligence and... You know, but it is amazing time. So what are some of those five things? Give us a few of the five. Well, the first one is really understanding what it is. So when I started my presentation, I asked the women, do you know what cognitive is? And like maybe two women kind of raised their hand. So we went through, you know, cognitive is about software that helps you, that helps learn, understand, and reason. Right. So it's, it's really about taking the cognitive spirit that's in us and leveraging computers and software to do the same thing. Right. So we talked a lot about that. And then we, our second thing we talked about was the opportunity that exists out there. So 95% of healthcare, 88% of financial services, 50% of all developed applications will use cognitive. And some of the women were like, wow, I had no idea. That was like 1%, 2%, but it's, it's huge and it's growing. Right. Um, and then we talked about the skills gap as our big number three. So, you know, there are people coming out of college right now making six figures because they've got AI and, you know, uh, machine learning on their resume. And so we looked at the six top skills that are needed in this era and how the women in the room could expand what they're already doing to really take advantage and have that first mover advantage right, in the marketplace right, with right. those skills. Yeah, how, how exciting. And, and then... That all ties back to, well, first before we go there, you know, we had a great interview with Nancy Pearson at, at Ivy yeah. Interconnect, so check it out on Google, Nancy Pearson, The Cube uh, 2016, you'll see, and she kind of goes through step by step, you know, kind of what is cognitive computing, uh, which is terrific. But the other thing is it ties back into, which is so exciting, is Internet of Things, right? There's so much activity going on yeah. with Internet of Things, connected devices, self-driving cars. I mean, if you ever think that this tech innovation cycle slows down, 
uh, look no further than IoT to see that no, it just continues to accelerate. And Cognitive has a huge role in Internet of Things. Yeah, in fact, many of the um, demos and the examples that I showed the women today, so they could experience it, not just hear about it, were examples of where Cognitive and IT work together. So for instance, let's take insurance companies looking at you know, having cognition to recognize a picture of a car, the model of a car, but also what damage is done. So you no longer have to type it in, key it in, the damage is right there from visual recognition, but then tied into the IoT sensors about were you going too fast, you know, what happened, were you on ice, you know, some of that that helps you gain more insight into the accident could really disrupt the insurance uh, area. Manufacturing. Um, I was just with an amazing startup that has combined using sensors on how a manufacturing person puts things together, but also cognitive for the, you know, visualizing and doing trade-off analysis to optimize each person, the way that they put things together, not a generic, right? So you should do this in 10 seconds and I should, but okay, based on what I do, I can do the whole thing in the same amount of time, but maybe my step one takes shorter than yours and that's okay. So it optimizes overall. So again, using IoT and cognitive. And the list goes on. You know, we gave some examples today of fashion and retail. Um, having a dress that senses what's happening with you, your heartbeat, showcasing colors, but being cognition enough to understand your personality so it doesn't put yellow on you because you don't look good in yellow or you don't think you look good in yellow. So that combination is such... I think a powerful one. We call it catnip for developers because <laughs> cognitive and, and uh, IoT are the two hottest things right now in Silicon Valley. Right. That's funny, catnip for developers. Yeah. So speaking of Silicon Valley, <laughs> you recently moved to Silicon Valley uh, a while back. How's that experience been? What's it feel like to be kind of in the heart of, uh, the heart of what's going on? You know, I love it. I loved being in New York because there were so many great startups, you know, retail and fashion. But what I really love about Silicon Valley uh, in San Francisco is because there's so much tech there, you just feel like there's an innovation or disruption happening all the time and you're in it. And sometimes I'll be talking to people and they'll be going, oh, I just heard about this. I'm like, what? I heard about that six months ago. So I feel like I'm in the know and I'm getting to know some of the most influential people, venture capitalists, seeing what investments are having and, and seeing it in use. I mean, almost every store you know, whether you go into a Chick-fil-A or they're, they're so advanced in their use of technology. It's just, uh, it's just exhilarating, I have to say. Oh, that's great. And, and IBM's obviously making huge investments. We, we did a, a, a kind of an innovation day at the Spark Development Center, which is right in downtown San Francisco, really, yeah. um, because that's where the talent is and that's where they really put the center. So IBM making big moves in, in the Bay Area. Yeah, I mean, the ecosystem there is incredible. And I've learned that there are really three ecosystems. There's Oakland, there's San Francisco, and there's Silicon Valley. And they really are three distinct areas. So we're really ensuring that we're doing the right things in all three and of those as well. And then you'll learn that there's even subset to that. Because then you go, be, yeah. you go to Santa Clara, <laughs> and that's where, the, that's where the silicon is yeah. in Silicon Valley. Then you go to kind of the software hub. Now we've got the, actually the automotive thing is amazing. Ford opened up their innovation center. Obviously yeah. Tesla's there. Uh, Audi has their innovation center. So it's, it is an exciting place to be. So you're a busy lady. You are cruising around all the time. What do you have coming up in the next six months that you're excited about? Where, where will people find Sandy Carter, except for on Twitter? You can always find you on always Twitter. Always on Twitter. Um, you know, I think some of the things I'm most excited about are, well, coming up here very shortly, I'm doing IT Slam presentation, and that is on uh, cognitive and IoT. And that's a virtual seminar, which I love. So it's like two days of virtual conferencing. The next big in-person thing that I'm doing is in June in India. So India will have more developers by next year than any other country in the world. They'll outpace the United States. So we're doing a major developer conference there in June. What city? Um, Bangalore, okay. the city of developers. Right. And uh, we'll be doing that in June. And I just, I'm really looking forward to the impact that that will have. And then, of course, coming up in you know, the second half of the year as well, we always do our big analytics Watson show. And I think that's another big one for us as well, capturing the ecosystem. You'll see us do some more stuff in San Francisco around that to, to really um, hone in on what we're doing with startups as well as the developer community too. And then I do have to tell you one really fun thing that's happening this week. Absolutely. Uh, Wednesday. I don't know if it's too late for this show, but one of our startups, Grush, um, they do Grush? a... Grush? Grush. Yeah, like that? Brush, but with a G. Okay. Grush. 
Um, they've created a smart toothbrush okay. that uses and leverages analytics and Bluemix, of course, IBM Cloud. So as a child is brushing their teeth, they're watching a game so that they know, you know how long to brush their teeth, but it's analyzing all of the different movements. So twice a day, 10,000 different data points to help you to brush your teeth better. And it's fun, so kids like to use it. And it's really, I think, had an impact on that particular segment of the, of the market. They were selected as one of the top 15 on America's Greatest Makers, which wow. is really cool. So they've already made that first cut. Um, on Tuesday night, we'll be sh they'll be showcased the second time. And on Wednesday, we're going to go to the IoT Innovation Lab that just opened. It's their grand opening. And we're going to celebrate Grush and what they've done and have tons of IoT and cognitive startups come in all over San Francisco to celebrate what they've done, see how they did it, and see how other startups can get a great assistance from IBM. Uh, you got to be publishing all this stuff someplace. So if people miss the event, where can they kind of go celebrate? Yeah. So if you go off of our um, off the IBM website, off of Developer Works, so our Developer Works site, you'll see Grush on there, and you can go and catch up on some of the episodes, as well as how Grush did it. So we've developed an architecture pattern on what Grush used and how they connected things together, and that will be out on Developer Works as well. Awesome. Well, yeah, Sandy, it's really cool. The hardest working gal at IBM, <laughs> no doubt about it, except maybe. The big boss, but uh, <laughs> but it's great to see you. Thanks for stopping great to by, see you too. and thank uh, you for coming. Absolutely, you can always catch up with Sandy on Twitter. She she's very active. Uh, always touch base with her. So thanks for coming by. Thank you very much. Absolutely, thanks. I'm Jeff Frick. We are at the Girls in Tech Catalyst Conference in Phoenix, Arizona. You're watching the Cube. Thanks for watching. <laughs>